Have you ever verbally abused your computer? Have you ever wished death upon the man who invented dice? No? Then you definitely haven't ever played Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon, or as I prefer to call it, Evil Fun Time with RNG where everybody dies, is a side-scrolling, roguelike, dungeon-crawling, turn-based RPG developed by Red Hook Studios, where you set out to make right all of the wrongdoings of your ancestor, who was a real doofus, and now wants you to fix everything for him. You and your glory-seeking adventurers will set out into the depths of the old, decrepit ruins of your family's lineage, and probably die at some point to some ghoulish horror of the night. Or they'll die the way God intended, with a stress-induced heart attack. This game is a refreshing yet rage-inducing take on the turn-based combat genre that will test you and your hero's resolve as you push your luck and your very will to live, marching through hellish ruins, walls, coves and warrens, all the way slaying evil enemies and behemoth bosses on your way to the aptly named Darkest Dungeon. When the different elements that make this game enjoyable all click together, it's a great experience. The ambience, the narration, the combat, when it works, it really works. However, there are a couple of things that I didn't enjoy quite as much about this game. It can tend to be a little tedious and opaque at times. Sometimes I felt like my resolve was being tested more than the resolve of my heroes. Needless to say, Darkest Dungeon isn't the game for everyone, but if you're willing to give it some time, it can find its way to being a mainstay of your game library. Let's get into it. One area in which this game stood out for me is how it manages to create diversity from what at first glance would seem a rather narrow slice of gameplay. There's a bunch of unique and interesting classes, despite the fact that literally none of them is a whooper, which is just a terrible design choice on Red Hook's part. Each hero will also develop their own quirks and traits which will affect how they perform in combat as well as how they interact with the world around them. This helps add to the flavour of each of your heroes as individuals, and even prevents two heroes of the same class from playing exactly the same. This game can feel a little overwhelming, especially at first, but after a while you just sort of learn to accept the fact that shit is just not always going to go your way and your heroes will die. That's just inevitable. The dungeoneering is dotted with plenty of great moments, when criticals land and your party perks up and pushes on, and vice versa when things don't go your way and all hope seems lost. The lighting mechanic is really interesting, as you'll be safer and generally better in combat when the way is lit well, but dim lights encourage more difficult combat at the risk of greater reward and loot. Me, being a little bitch, always had an overabundance of torches and had it at max light level at all times. The combat itself is pretty simple, yet different party lineups allow you to tackle it in a bunch of different ways. I personally really liked using a bounty hunter and an arbalist in my party because they help to complement each other's strengths. This game urges you to think carefully, to make important decisions to carry your heroes out alive. The action isn't mindless or pointless, it's very considered and gripping. You will also need to prepare yourself well while not spending too much coin rationing yourself for each expedition. However, the combat can get a little tedious at times. Between the multitudes of enemies you'll encounter on each raid alongside the multitudes of raids you'll have to complete, there's a lot of grinding to do. The game also has plenty of different bosses to fight and plenty of different objectives to fill which it just kind of throws at you and lets you figure it out for yourself. Some of the bosses are really cool, some of them are slightly horrifying, and some I just fucking hate. Fuck the wizened hag boss, alright, fuck it. The first time I wiped in this game was to that stupid ass boss, and the actual battle literally took like 20 minutes. It was just my last two guys being constantly put on death's door while I couldn't do anything. It just kept switching back to the boss's turn before I could make a move. I had it down to 3 HP, but was just stuck in an endless loop of it not being my fucking turn. But Davo, you had a shit team composition for that boss. Oh boy, yeah, I guess I was supposed to know that on my first playthrough of the game, right? Hindsight is 20 fucking 20. And to be fair, the second time I fought that boss, I absolutely obliterated it, but that's beside the point. For a lot of the gameplay in general, I was initially a little confused as to how it worked. I had no idea how it figured out turn order until I was told it's basically just a dice roll, but just a lot of the stuff in general was confusing. The game lacks a little transparency in this regard. And yeah, I get that it's heavily RNG based, but I would still have liked a little more a clue as to what I was doing. I feel like this game is a little too much for some people and would likely turn them away within the first couple of hours. The first time I managed to get my main party up to level 5 for the advanced dungeons, they all died except one who managed to run away. I didn't really feel like playing much after that to be honest. This game often just feels like you're taking one step forward to take two steps back. You grind and grind so you can send your top party out in perfect condition, and then they all get killed by a pig with drums. It happened to me. I felt like this game pushed me to the point where I was questioning whether or not I was actually enjoying it. I mean, nobody likes losing, but it's nice when you can enjoy yourself regardless. 
I'm not entirely sure I did enjoy myself when things were going wrong in this game. You know, a game can be punishing, but Darkest Dungeon takes it to another excruciating level. A game like Monster Hunter, sure, it will piss you right off sometimes, but when you wipe on a monster, it doesn't take all of your armor and weapons you spend hours grinding, kick you into a ditch, and tell you to walk it off. I actually really like the stress and afflictions mechanic, however. Sure, it can be a pain, but it's really refreshing to have a game where your heroes aren't just androids that are totally unaffected by surrounding violence and horror. They actually have a somewhat human reaction to bad things happening. I also found it incredibly funny that my heroes are being stressed to the point of having a heart attack because some fancy skeleton man was spilling too much bonehead juice on them. It's gonna be a nightmare to get that stain out. The town estate comes equipped with different buildings to help reduce stress, treat illnesses and quirks, recruit new heroes, and also upgrade buildings to bolster gear and combat skills. And each building will need to be upgraded using heirlooms, which you can acquire as quest rewards and through loot. The town estate will also have random events that can occur each week, which also help to embellish the diversity and RNG elements of the game. The gripe I do have with the stress mechanic is that you'll have to leave your heroes in the tavern to get pissed for a week and have to do something else in the meantime. I often just had myself throwing random parties out to do an easy quest just so I could use my main party again. And that there is probably the biggest issue I had with the game. Although sometimes the gameplay is knife edge, sometimes you're just going out into a dungeon for the sake of passing some time. It's a little hot and cold. But when the gameplay is knife edge, the game really does come into its own. And the best gameplay is accompanied with a very well orchestrated atmosphere. Aesthetically, this game is very pleasing. The setting, the art style, the audio and sound effects, I was convinced I was actually in some Lovecraftian hellhole. The narrator in Darkest Dungeon is probably my favourite thing about the game. The delivery is just so suitable and convincing for the setting. I found myself parroting him basically the whole time I was playing. The character sprites and portraits all look really nice. I like that literally nobody has eyes. But seriously, the design and aesthetic is really cool. The UI is fairly easy to wrap your head around and the effects and indicators certainly make sense once you wrap your head around the game's core mechanics. The soundtrack is... It's, it's there. It's pretty good and suitable for the game's setting, but it's, it's nothing to rave about. But I think that the atmosphere that this game creates is not only important from an aesthetical standpoint, but from a gameplay standpoint. Do you think that this game would be half as daunting as it is if you were prancing around the field of clovers? No, it wouldn't. The game not only punishes you, but you expect it to punish you because of the way it sets up the world around you. From both an artistic and technical perspective, Red Hook have done a great job in this regard. This game was rather difficult for me to review, mostly just because I kept getting angry at it. I was yelling at my computer more than I'd like to admit, I often felt the need to take a break from it. The game sometimes really pushed me, I think I was more stressed than some of my heroes were to be honest. I found it tough sometimes because I felt like I was copying more losses than I was making gains. But amongst all of the party wipes and the masses of bone hurt juice, I had quite a lot of fun playing Darkest Dungeon. There were some memorable moments that let me look back fondly on my time playing this game. And I think that's what this game is. It's a great story to tell. I love when I play through a game and I can tell people an entertaining recount of what happened. If a game does that for me, then it's probably in my good books. And I think that Darkest Dungeon is in my good books. I certainly don't think I'm done with this game yet, and although I don't have any of the DLC yet, it's definitely something I wouldn't hesitate to buy. This game makes you push your luck at the expense of losing everything. If you persist with this game, it will reward you. Though I really can't blame a lot of people for not persisting too hard with it. It's certainly not the game for everyone. The amount of replayability and diversity this game creates from what might not seem like a whole lot to begin with is definitely one of the best things about this game. And if Red Hook had decided to put whoopers in it, I would definitely recommend buying it. Regardless, I'd probably still buy it if you're into this kind of sadistic torture. It's a humble $25 on Steam and a nice addition to any game library. And stick with it long enough, Darkest Dungeon will be an enjoyable experience. Unless you didn't pray to Aryan Jesus first. Then you can hate the shit out of this game.